What's up, guys? It's, <laughs> it's my most birth. I am finally doing something again, right? Because I need to work on my car. And we have to do a tie rod change on a 2010 Mazda 6i. So we're going to see if we can get this done and which we're going to get this done because it's actually quite simple. So I'll show you. So what do we need here? Well, of course, we need a new part, okay? That's how new one looks. We need gloves, because somebody messed with my old ones at myself. We need a jack to lift the car up. We need the car itself, right? Okay, and your tools. So for these lug nuts, these are size 21, so you gotta get your 21 socket, in which, you know, it'll be in this box. In this box. So back here somewhere, yep. And then a ratchet, but also need the breaker bar to take the lug nuts off. So this car sits quite low for this type of jack, right? So what I had to do was get it up here on the curb or the garage, because it's lifted, right? So now I can slide this under here. So of course you gotta jack up the car. I'm not necessarily, not necessarily gonna show that because I'm pretty sure I've shown that before and we should know how to jack up a car. If not, there's videos. I got videos too. So I'm not gonna halfway show. So really, we just wanna get to a point where the car begins to lift, right? But we're not gonna lift it all the way up because we still gotta break the lug nuts off first. All right, so since we're on the left side, think about it, unloose this way, so that means we gotta go this way, all right? We're gonna do that for all of them. Okay, so this is the old one, right? So this right here is your tie rod end, and this shouldn't move. So let's play a game called, does it work? Let's see. Oh, you see that? Yeah, no, that's not what's happening. So what it means we gotta do is replace it. <laughs> so there is this pin that we must take off, all right? Because this is holding the jam nut, which is this piece right here, in place. So we gotta take this part off. And we're gonna have to disconnect back here this jam nut. So this can actually actually spin. Let's see. Sometimes these are a little pesky. I gotta be a little bit. Alright, I'll keep it straight. Uh, all right, let's see. Back down here, got to bend it out a little bit to pull it. Basically, it is going to come out. There we go. God, geez. And that's your pin. All right, so this part has to come loose, right? So it took a little minute. I ain't going to lie to you like the other people. Because mine is, as you can see, kind of rusted. This is a 21, right? And this is what you're going to get on here in order to break it off. Because the point is to have the jam nut moving free. Now, as you see, it's moving free. Now, because we're not getting alignment, it's mission critical that how the layout is right now, you leave it that way, right? So I cracked it back just enough to get it off of the tie rod in, right? Because when we put the new one on, we need a new tie rod in to lock in exactly how this one is. So it's broken right here, but it's not backed off that much. So next, we're just gonna take this jam nut off, the crown. And this is probably a 17. And basically, you're gonna, you know, oh, and basically you're gonna ratchet it off. So nothing too hefty. All right, so crown is off, jam nuts unlocked. Now you wanna get like a light little tap. All right, well, mine's a little rusty, so we're gonna spray something around here and then let it sit and then whack it again. After a few whacks, I gotta pull it out, you know, and get it back out. So, this, yeah. Now, again, keep the steering the same so you won't knock your wheel out of alignment. Then, you know, this just basically screws off. As you see, we released our jam nut. So now, this just turns and turns for us. As always, we do our side by side comparison. Of the new parts versus old, so same length as we see the new boot, nice and tight. All right, you see that it doesn't can't move with my thumb. All right, all right. You see this one's about worn, and I can just play with this. I can just it's a little joystick. I can just play with this. So again, so with the new one, we're gonna screw it on. All right, just like we screwed the other one off. And remember, we're only gonna screw it back to the point of where we barely broke the jam out off because we don't want to knock this out of alignment. 
All right, so it's just about screwed in there. Remember, ours is from the bottom. So we have to place it back in from the bottom like it was. And basically, this is going to slide up through here. And then I'll put the crown on. So move surprise. So apply this with a new crown. So of course, we're going to just tighten this on. Or we're not going to tighten it. We're just going to place it on. So this way, it doesn't move. All right, and what we're going to do next is actually tighten the jam nut back. All right, so go ahead and go ahead and put that in the back. This is where I wish I had one of them ratcheting ones because that makes life so much easier, so much easier. But yeah, we're going to keep tightening jam nut. All right, all right, okay, cool. Jam nut is in there tight. Right, now we can tighten this up. So, yep. Here's what we're gonna tighten this in. So what you gotta do is get the hole, right, where that pin, where the pin in there, it's in the back, where the pin will be able to slide through here. All right, and we can see our hole for the, the nut, or for the pin. So I'm gonna tighten it just a little bit so I can have it more exposed. Yep, there it is, I have our pin. Everyone just slide through the hole here. So, bam, right? And then we're gonna bend it up. So, I'm a smidge it lazy, so I can just do a one bend off either to the side or to the top. But typically, I'll just do it to the top and just double it off. Because the whole point is as long as it's curved, right? Cool. So, now we do another tech. See that? No movement, that's what we're looking for. And no movement back here in the inner. This is your inner tie rod, this is your outer tie rod. No play, and that's what we're looking for. And that's how you do uh, outer tie rod change on a 2010 Mazda 6i, which, I mean, the S is probably just about the same. But um, yeah, and that's how you quickly do it, in a sense, and how you slide a little bit. If you're trying to get away from doing a wheel alignment because you're doing that, okay, just always make sure your wheel is turned the correct way, right? So. We see, can you see? It's on the damn door. All right, so my wheel, right, is straight, okay? And my tire, well, you can't see the tires, but the rotor itself is turned straight. So I can show you on the other side. Mm. Okay, the tire is straight, right? And my wheel is straight. And we just did a placement part where people will definitely charge to get the alignment, but if you do it right, you don't have to. Because a wheel alignment can easily run you between 75 to 150 bucks, depending on who you go to and what kind of car you got. And some might charge 200 for some of you luxury people. So all you got to do is just throw the wheel back on and we're basically done. Good job's work. Now, if you want to see more videos from me and how I work on cars, then comment below. And make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, you know what I mean, to keep the page going. Because I love you guys and I respond to every comment. But that has been your Moments with Murph with Cars.